And someone that is mentally ill, I mean, for 18 years, doctors have totally written them off, no hope of recovery, suddenly become normal. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Chris and Christine Spanbauer. I mean, th this is unbelievable. They're, they're, they're not religious or anything like that. Uh, they like music. So they go out to a, a, a Christian concert, and according to my notes, my notes say angels lifted you two feet off the ground. Oh, give me a break. Really? Yes. First I got saved. I had two people that said, isn't it about time you stop struggling and fighting and ex accept Jesus as your Savior? And I said, yes, it's time I quit fighting. So when I did, he scrubbed me inside and out. I asked Jesus into my heart, and he just scrubbed me. And all the angels came, and I saw them just like light bulbs going off. And, and, and it says in heaven that they all rejoice when just one person comes to know him. But, but you were like, what do you mean you were off the ground? Were they lifting you or? Yes, they lifted me up after I accepted the Lord because I was going back to my tent to see my husband. Okay, when you, when you got back to the tent, what was going on with you? Well, I was, uh, I heard the noise uh, of the music stopping and a lot of people leaving the area. And when she came around the side of the tent, uh, I saw two people with her that were laughing with her, and she was sobbing at the time, and uh, she fell into my arms, uh, crying. Did you Jesus. see her off the ground? I did. You really did? I really did. What did it look like? Uh, well, she wasn't walking. She was floating, and she was glowing. This is, this is weird. She was glowing like a dull fluorescent lamp. And it was 11 o'clock at night. Did, so it scare, I did it scare you? Did it intrigue you? What? I knew something wonderful had happened for my wife, but I didn't understand what it was. I wasn't saved. I didn't understand what Christ had done for her. So what effect did this being saved have on you? Oh my gosh, I, I did not sleep at night. I took up to four sleeping pills and drank a gallon of wine sometimes just to get to sleep because I had no peace in my life. And when, I, when that got saved, God saved me like that so wonderfully, I slept every night. It was just awesome. This might have ha must have had quite an impact on you, Chris. Uh, it had a tremendous impact on me. I was, I was happy for her, but angry at the circumstances. Um, the Lord dealt with me quite a bit that evening. And uh, even though there were 4,000 people at this concert, I felt all alone. And it was the next night that I asked Christ in my life. And your life, uh, you had a good marriage, you had five children, and when you had the, the fifth child, when did you realize there was something wrong with Christine? It was about eight weeks after the fifth child was born. Uh, she began to experience a lot of depression and uh, we went right to her uh, obstetrician and uh, let him know about it. And he put her on some uh, Valium-like medications. Uh, but it didn't seem to help her too much. She went into uh, deeper and deeper uh, realms of, of depression. What, uh, tell me uh, it was depression, but then it, the behavior started getting very bizarre. Like what? Um, she sort of seasonally would get better for just a few months, and then she would get much worse. And her behavior became more psychotic in nature. Um, she began to do a lot of irrational things. Uh, uh, like what? Uh, she would run to the windows and open the windows and think there was gas in the house uh, or that someone was after her. Uh, things like that. Like paranoid, and uh, she would like grab the steering wheel in your car? That's correct. It's, uh, and, and would she actually run after cars? She did, in fact, run after cars. Mm -hmm. Now, were you in a small town or a big city? 
Well, we actually lived in a couple of different cities, so we had to deal with uh, uh, cars in different cities. And, and when this was going on, did you have any understanding you were doing something bizarre? It was something that just come over me, and I had no control of it, really. I felt that I was hopeless, and uh, I, kn I knew I was doing it, but I, I had no control over it, and I wanted to quit. And I would always ask him to pray for me so that it would stop. But we're not talking about eight days. We're not talking about a year. We're not talking about 10 years. We're talking about 18 years. Uh, could the doctors help her any, Chris? The doctors did their best to help Christine. Um, I, we had 19 different doctors in 18 years. and. Uh, I, it was frustrating to see that their abilities to help her were not enough ability to help her. And uh, very frustrating. Um, most of the physicians that I dealt with and Christine uh, received therapy from uh, did not really want to listen to what I had to say. They were trying to deal out of the medical textbook uh, with the prescri uh, prescribed medication protocol. But would the medication make her normal? The medication never did make her normal. And would she, uh, did they say that she eventually would get okay after 10 years and 15 years? What was the prognosis? The prognosis was she would never get better. She would always be on medication. And uh, how was she, was she able at all to take care of the five children? There would be times that she was less depressed, less psychotic, and occasionally with medications, uh, probably 50% of the time would give her some level of uh, ability to help in the home, but at other times seemed to almost work against her. And I have to ask a hard question. Why didn't you leave her? Why didn't you throw in the towel? Several reasons. Number one... I'll tell you what, hold that thought. 18 years? That type of bizarre, bizarre behavior, running after cars, trying to cause a wreck. Uh, she couldn't go into stores, uh, just depressed all the time. I don't know how Chris held on, or do I? You're going to find out in a moment. Very supernatural, don't go away. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter with Chris and Christine Spanbauer. I don't know how Chris did it. For 18 years, his wife, she would shake, she was suicidal, she would run after cars, all sorts of bizarre behavior, mental illness. Doctors offered no hope. They would drug her, but it, it, it worked a little bit and not work. So how did you hang in there? Why did you hang in there? I, I have to ask this hard question. I mean, come on now, most people would have left their wife under those circumstances. Well, we'd had a wonderful marriage before she got sick. And we had five children who were supportive and we yeah, were Yeah, but that's 18 family. years. I know. That's um, a long time. Yes, it was. Um, I had to develop a prayer life that was consistent, and uh, would believe God's promises uh, beyond what I saw with my own eyes. But still, that's a long period of time. Did he ever speak to you? He spoke to me fairly often. And what did he tell you about your wife? Uh, he told me he was going to completely heal her. Did you, after 18 years of this, did you think that maybe it was your mind playing tricks? No, I, I knew it was the Lord, um, but, but of course it's, it's one thing to hear the Lord speak that and another thing to see it come to pass. So tell me what you would pray, how you would pray. Well, I, I mean, I, according to my notes, you would pray at certain points for God to take your life. Why? I reached times of frustration. Um, I had asked the Lord to take me home several times during her sickness. I just thought it would be easier for everybody. 
Um, I knew that she could be institutionalized and she'd be taken care of, but um, the Lord told me to stop praying that way. Um, Christine, you are, you're, you're in and out of sanity, let's say. When you're kind of in at times from the medication, you see what's going on with Chris. Uh, what's going on inside of the mind of someone that is mentally ill? Oh my gosh. Well, you have a dark, you're like in a dark hole, and you, you try to get up out of that hole, but you can't. You can't dig your way out. And you know the only way out for me was the Lord. Now, you had had an experience with God, but I mean, over 18 years, what was your thinking about God at this point? Well, at, toward the end, I, I did not um, believe too much. I had a hard time. I, I was losing hope. But through, through most of it, I believed in God, and I was used even. I would pray with people, pray for people to be healed. It's, now, at the end of 18 years of this, you're not going to be able to answer this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What if a miracle hadn't happened after 18 years? Would you have hung in there? I believe I would have. Now, you prayed in a very unusual fashion. You prayed a great deal of time in unknown tongues. Explain that to me. I had had an uh, early experience in my Christian walk of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I had uh, been encouraged and discipled to pray in the Holy Ghost, uh, pray in tongues. And I had set a discipline in my life to do that early on in my Christian walk and had done that all my life. So how many hours a day might you do this? It depended on how bad she was and sometimes on how bad I was. But um, I'd prayed four and five hours a day in the Holy Ghost. That's on a pretty regular basis? That's correct. Probably can't answer this, but I'm going to have to ask you anyway. If you had not prayed in unknown tongues, do you think the miracle would have happened? I don't see how it could have. I just don't see how it could have. What, what, what in your opinion is going on when you're praying this supernatural language from the inside that God has given you? What's going on? Well, the, the Bible teaches us that it builds us up on the inside. It edifies, builds us up. Uh, I believe that praying in an unknown tongue accomplishes things that we could never imagine or think of to pray for. Well, I, I know you can't wait to find out what happened. And I'm going to tell you something. It is so wonderful after 18 years. But I have a good friend by the name of Dave Roberson. And he found out about these supernatural languages in which you pray right out of your own spirit, supernatural mysteries to God. They're known as perfect prayers because your intellect doesn't get in the way. And so he found out about this. And like Chris, he started praying eight hours a day. I mean, he wasn't working, and he just would go in. He'd hear the factory uh, 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 horn go off. He would go into his prayer closet and pray. Then lunch break, he'd take his lunch pail. He'd eat lunch. Then uh, he'd hear the factory whistle go again, and he'd go back into the prayer closet. Eight hours a day for days and weeks and months, and all of a sudden, a miracle happened in his life. He went to church, and he looked at the lady next to him, and he knew what was wrong with her. And he prayed for her, and she got healed. Be right back after this word. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, here with Chris and Christine Spanbauer. For 18 years, Christine had mental illness, no hope medically. Her husband supernaturally held on. How many times did God speak to you where you know that it was his voice and said your wife will be healed? Uh, three different times specifically. How important was that that he spoke to you? It was vital. It was absolutely vital. It gave me hope. Now, your wife would be involved in such bizarre behavior, like she would actually dress as Wonder Woman? 
And, and, and um, uh, according to my notes, you would have what you'd gain a lot of weight, then you'd become anorexic. Yes, you'd hospitalized swing. for anorexia. Uh, when you were hospitalized in a mental institution, did it do you any good? Uh, actually, the Lord used me there. Five people were saved. <laughs> and I got to pray for my roommate who hadn't spoken in 17 years. And she got saved and she was trying to kill me. But God said, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to take care of you, and I'm going to give you the charge over the angels. The angels will be there protecting you. Because she would try to strangle me every night. And I said, why can't you get her out of my room? I mean, why, can't, why do I have to stay with her? But the Lord spoke to me and said, no, I want her to be saved. She got saved and started talking. She put her arm around me all the time. She just stayed with me everywhere we went in that hospital. I'm going to take you to that famous hammock. Yes. Yeah, where was it located? It was in the backyard by, by the, uh, where the horses were, and it was um, in front of the fence where the horses were. And so you were just relaxing. laying in, and you probably did that often. I did that often. And you're relaxing in this hammock, 18 years of mental illness. Yes, God's using you, but you lost 18 years of your life. You yes. lost the time that you could have spent with your family. You're laying in that hammock. What happens? I'm, I'm sitting there and I go, Lord, when are you going to heal me? I just need to be healed now. I just want to be healed so bad. And the Lord said, I'm going to heal you right now, Christine. And as he healed me, all the darkness left. And angels came all around me. I could feel the presence of angels. And it stayed like that a long time. I had the presence and the peace. As you're sharing that right now, I can feel can't you? I can, yes. I can feel oh, the yes. presence of God. The presence of God is very strong. It, right it, did you see anything happen like when that darkness lifted? Could you see it or you just felt it? Um, I saw it leave. Uh, darkness just started to lift like this. So it was like, like a, a cloud. spirit. Yes. It, it was, was like a, a spirit. Yes. It was definitely a precious and uh, demonic spirits. Okay, it left you. Yes. What was the first thing you did when you realized? Of course, you just experienced the, the most wonderful presence of God, but what's the first thing you did? I walked into the house, and I wanted my children to know and my husband. So I told my husband first. But Chris, I'm did healed. you believe her, or did you think it was just another thing? No, oh, there was no hiding what had happened. I could see it in her face. Uh, her peace had returned. Her joy had returned. Uh, the horror had left. Now, wait a second. You could not go into a store. You were so paranoid. Oh, no. I couldn't. So what happened with going into stores? When I would go into stores, people would say, what happened to you? And they weren't, they're not Christians. They would say, what happened? And I got to share with them the miracle that God had done for me. And they said, you used to be crazy. How could you not be crazy? I said, God heals. Now, how long has this been? This has been almost three years that I've been healed. Now you must have a great deal of compassion for people that have mental illness. Yes, I do. Would you, would you look in the, uh, you know, see, I, I believe that there are people that are suffering just as Christine was suffering. And I believe that when someone overcomes these spirits, they have authority in that realm. And when two or more agree in the name of Jesus, it's even a greater authority. Would you look in the camera and pray for people with mental illness to be, for that, 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 that evil oppression yes. that left you, pray for it to leave them? Yes. Lord, I just pray right now that you would um, set these people free of this oppression, that it would leave in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that you would just set them free and give them your peace and come into their lives and let them surrender their lives to you and live for him. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, speaking of compassion, Chris, you've got to have a lot of compassion. You've got to be really proud of this woman. I am. I mean, she loves you for what your stand was, but you've got to be proud of her. How about the children? Um, you have grandchildren now. Yes. Will your children allow you at this point to be with the grandchildren with all that bizarre 18 year history of bizarre behavior? Now she was pregnant and she would have never let me watch her newborn, 
But when she saw me healed, she said, I have my mom back. And she let, I've been watching the baby ever since. She's two now. And she Well, that's the acid test. <laughs> uh, what about, you have a son that prays for people with mental illness. Yes, he does. Tell me about one case. Okay, there was, um, he lived in, in um, Arizona then, and he had a bitterness in his heart. But when I got um, healed, he let go of that bitterness, and the Lord has been using him for people that have, um, has compassion for people that have mental illness. And this man uh, was Spanish, and he said, right now you can uh, accept Jesus as your Lord, and you can be healed, too, of this illness because my mom was set free. And he kneeled in uh, a field, and he accepted all of the Lord, and then he was healed. Chris, there are some spouses going through exactly what you went through. They love God. Would you look in the camera and give them some advice? There are many people I know that are standing for their spouse, whether it's husband, wife. You need to know that you cannot lose hope. You need to speak hope to that individual that's sick. And you need to believe God's promises. And I would suggest highly that if you are part of a church that does not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, find one who does believe in it. Begin to learn to speak in tongues and do it disciplined and daily and watch the healing come. But there are people that are watching right now, in order to be so filled with the Holy Spirit, you have to get rid of sin. The only way to get rid of sin is to tell God you're sorry and to ask that the blood of Jesus washes away your sins and then with your mouth proclaim that Jesus is your Messiah and Lord. If you have done this, you're a candidate to receive more of the Spirit of God that even drew you to Him in the first place. And if you will say, say it with me right now, Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Right now, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Feel that peace? That's, that's the Spirit of God that's coming in you. And say out loud, in Jesus' name, thank you for filling me with your Spirit. And you may say, I don't know what to say to speak for my spirit, but that's right, because it's not coming from your mind. If you'll be like a little child and just speak out loud by faith, I don't know what to say, perfect. Just start saying syllables and make them longer. Because, oh, some of you are starting and others are just waiting for something to take over your tongue. It'll never happen. It'll only happen if you, by faith, like a little child, if your father said, make up a language, it won't be made up, but the mechanics for the supernatural to come out of you are just like making up a language. Raise your hands up to God right now. That's a form of surrender. Say, thank you, Father God for filling me with your spirit. Begin to praise him. Well, let's all three of us, okay. join hands and praise him in an unknown language. All curses, loose them and let them go. Cancer, all infections, all addictions, all injuries, AIDS, sexually transmitted disease, pneumonia, cirrhosis, bacterial meningitis, muscular dystrophy, 